Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, so I thought I would do a couple of videos on how I scan for trades and also how I choose those trades um, after I scan because when you do a scan, you, you'll get a number of things pop up and it's kind of hard to know what you want to trade. So it really just depends on, I guess, the scan I have built and what I'm actually looking for there. So uh, in this first video, I thought I would show how I do my short duration trades, which are normally going to be less than seven days. Or about one week um, I find it's best to enter these trades on a Friday and try to close them the next week possibly before Friday um, especially if you can collect 50% of the credit from a Friday to a Monday you know that's always great so the first scan I'm going to show you is basically just it's where I'm looking for roughly a, around a half a percent return in less than a week um, first of all we have bid at 20 cents uh, this just makes sure that we have a buyer on the other end because we are the seller. And when you start scanning here, you're going to find a lot of contracts that will not have a bidder. Um, so we want to make sure that there is a buyer on the other end. Um, otherwise, the bid could be zero. And that's really going to skew this return on risk here because the return on risk actually calculates from the midpoint of the bid and the ask. So we want to make sure we have a buyer. Uh, next, we're going to have a return on risk, and I just have this set for roughly 0.2% on the minimum to 0.6% on the max, and that just gives me something a little bit below half percent uh, for a week. And, you know, you can change these higher or lower depending on what you're looking for. Um, next, we have delta, and the minimum we want is negative 0 0.30, and the max is negative 0.10. And basically, if you're doing a negative delta, a negative delta is only going to scan the puts. So that means we don't have to actually put in here that we want to scan the put options. As long as you have negative delta, it will find puts. Uh, days to expiration were minimum one and max is seven. Um, open interest, we have 300. I do like to have some open interest in the contracts because that basically just, if you have some open interest there, um, it means that you are getting some trading done there. And normally that'll help to give you a little bit better bid ask spread. Um, if nobody's trading it, if the open interest is zero, your bid ask spread is going to be wide. So really having the open interest and the bid, just having these two option filters added in really helps to narrow down a lot of stocks. It's gonna filter out a bunch of stuff that you're just not going to be able to trade. Earnings, uh, we have a study filter for earnings, does not have any time in the next seven bars. So seven bars is actually seven trading days. So you need to be aware of that. Um, we could actually do this at five bars. If we run this scan on a Friday, uh, the next five bars would actually get us to the next Friday. And then last, I do have an actual directional indicator here. Um, this is the RSI scan, and I'm just making sure that we're getting close to an oversold territory. Normally oversold is under an RSI of 30. I have it at 40 right now. And that just gives us stocks that have had somewhat of a pullback. So, you know, anytime I see um, an ETF like the IWM, the SPY, or the QQQ, if I see them on this list, it's always kind of a, a guaranteed, you know, I'm going to share that with people. Um, but that's why I have that in there. I just mainly want to make sure that I'm not going to be trading stuff that is overbought. Um, because sometimes this scan, if, if you don't have this added in here, you know, it, it can bring up stocks when they're heavily overbought. And normally when that happens... Uh, with my luck, and it could be with yours as well, if, if you enter, if you sell a cash secured put on something at the all-time high and it's short duration, it's probably going to pull back on you that day or the next day. Um, that just seems to always happen. So if we run this scan right now, let's see how many. Uh, so it brings up 48 contracts right now. And all of these should expire on Friday. Uh, today is actually Tuesday. So yeah, this is the 18th of February. And one other thing I like to do, we want to show... A large number we can do 200 um, I have this one set to 500 I want to do one scan run it and save it as options and then I want to do another one and I want to save it as stocks and to save this all you do is you just go up here to these three dots or three lines save the scan query here and I will name one of them um, half a percent stock and then the other one is just going to be named half a percent and you can see that I have, there's half, then half stock. And basically what this lets me do is it lets me sort either by stocks or by contracts. And I find it's easier to sort through this stuff on a mobile phone. I actually do a lot of trading on my phone. 
Um, I've, I've really gotten really good at, at setting up scans and being able to sort on my phone as hard as that is to believe. Um, and I can do really well that way, but I've spent a lot of time setting that up. But anyway, if you save both of them, save one as stock and then one as options, uh, I find it makes it a lot easier to sort through this stuff. So that is our scan for the short duration stuff. And, you know, you can change this um, return on risk here. You know, you can set this higher. I actually have probably about three different scans, all this short duration stuff. And the only difference between all of them is basically just the return on risk. You know, I have one that's roughly half a percent. I have one that is 1%, which is actually, um, I think it's point, yeah, it's 0.7 to 1.3%. And then I have another scan, and this is actually 7 to 14 days, but I have another one that is roughly from 1.3 to, I want to say, 2 or 3%. Um, but I do that basically just to kind of split it all up, because, you know, I could do from 0.2 um, all the way to 3%, and, you know, it, it could find... 150 contracts and you know I may not want to find something that's a really high return right now so I found it's easier for me just to build two or three scans and then I can just look at the scan that has the percentage return that I'm interested in for that time frame so the next thing we want to do is we're going to look for an indicator that's actually not available in thinkorswim and that is the um, Theo trade auto expected move indicator and it is free if you just go to Google and just uh, search for Thinkorswim Auto Expected Move. It's going to be the first link that's going to pop up here. This is um, Don Kaufman of uh, Theo Trade, and basically he's got there's the link to it right there to download it. Um, he has a video on setup as well. You know, I'd suggest you just watch his video on how to set it up. Um, maybe go ahead and subscribe to him. He's very knowledgeable when it comes to just the stock market in general. So once you've done that, basically what this indicator does, and if you're not familiar with the expected move, uh, if we come in the trade tab, basically every expiration over at the far right, it's going to give you an expected move. So we can see that for Friday, three days to expiration, the IV for this contract series is roughly 29% and the expected move is plus or minus $10. So what this indicator does is every Friday, um, it will look at what the expected move is for the following Friday, and then it will plot a line on the chart for that next Friday, letting you know what it is. And basically this expected move, what it's saying is that's roughly just the one standard deviation move, higher or lower. So this means that 68% of the time, we're going to stay within this range here. 32% of the time, we are, go are going to trade outside of that move. And one thing that you do have to be careful of is sometimes when we break outside of it, we can really move a lot, especially to the downside. We actually broke out of it and we really moved down, but the entire market dropped that week. So that is something to be aware of. You know, I, that is something you, know, you, you need to understand that could happen. Um, and obviously it does happen. So another nice thing about this indicator is it actually will... Um, it'll tell you the percentage of time you're above or below these lines right here. So we can see under it, the S&P 500 in the last year, uh, which is roughly 254 trading days, we've only been below it 7% of the time, and we've only been above it 9% of the time. Um, so that lets us know that, you know, for pretty much we stay inside of it quite often. Um, here lately, we kind of have not. Uh, just because the moves have been so large, you know, we can see the expected move that's been drawn every single week here. And we can see these large moves that we've had every single week. So we really had a lot of volatility, a lot of price movement um, in the market the last couple of weeks. But if we want to go back and look just a couple of months back, you know, if we look at July, August and September of last year, you know, we can see we barely moved every single day. So around this time, you know, Anytime you're close to the lower edge of it, you could sell a cash secure put and you did pretty good. So what I like to do with this indicator, and you know, like I say, is I like to trade on probabilities. I'm trading on the probability that we're going to stay in this range. And if we do go outside of this range, 
I'm trading on the probability that we're not going to go an incredibly far amount outside of this range. So what I do, I have all of my stocks pulled up here and I have the same scan. This is the half a percent stock that I just showed you. And what I like to do is I like to just basically sort through this scan from the losers for today. And I want to see, you know, where we're at inside of this expected move. So, you know, right now, 3M, we're looking at, we are getting close to the lower edge. We can see that we actually tagged it yesterday and then we kind of opened up here, but now we've traded down. So, you know, I may look into maybe selling a cash accrued put somewhere outside of this expected move here. If it looks like we're going to get close to it, you know, we can go into the trade tab here and I'll try to find something around maybe the 15 or the 20 delta. Uh, so, you know, we can go to the 15 delta right here. It's 0.27 return on risk. So that's a quarter of a percent in really three days. Even though a quarter percent is a low return, um, annualized, that's actually pretty high. If we want to look at that annualized, it's 32% annualized. So that's a really good return annualized, but you know, you're not going to be able to get this every three days. So that's basically what I'm looking at there with, with this short term stuff. You know, we're looking at this expected move and we're just, we're watching to see when it gets on the lower edge of it. So TLT right now, we can see is actually at the lower edge. It's just below it. So, you know, if if we wanted to own TLT possibly, or we could just take, you know, a, a guess maybe that it's going to stay or maybe come back up. Um, one thing we can see, it's under at 14% of the time, and it's over at 10% of the time. So right now we are under it. If we pull up the trade tab here on IWM, or I'm sorry, TLT, um, three days, the 18 delta, the 133 strike. We're at 135 right now, so you know that still gives us another two dollars that we could drop. So you know that would put us right in here. So you know that's pretty, pretty good return for that 133. So you may be asking, you know, how well does this work? This short duration stuff. And I'll tell you right now, during times that implied volatility is lower, I guess when the VIX is below 20. Um, when it's in the teens, um, this strategy works really well. Um, actually, for the month of December, uh, basically, I was giving out roughly two trade ideas a day um, for the entire month of December to my, all of my um, Patreon subscribers. And we had roughly four losing trades the entire month of December. And that's across roughly about 50 trades, I think. It was a, yeah, it's 50 trades. So 46 out of the 50 were winning trades, basically. Um, and that was also kind of a, a lower time of implied volatility. Even though the market was kind of doing, uh, moving pretty good then, um, it worked exceptionally well. And every one of these trades was pretty much less than seven days. Um, so this short duration stuff, you know, it, it does work doing that. But once the IV starts to pop a little bit, um, <clears throat> you have to start doing some long duration stuff. And I'll actually show how I, cho I choose those in the next video. But this was the month of January. And for the month of January, um, I think we had about 70% win rate there. Um, basically, the first month of January, we had, you know, four or five losing trades right here. Um, the second week, we did really well. Uh, the third week, we had a couple of losing trades, and it was actually after the third week is when I went to the longer duration stuff. And we can see now that after the third week, the longer duration stuff, pretty much everything but one trade um, was winning at the time. So, you know, the short duration stuff works really well when the uh, VIX is at a lower level. Um, once it goes higher, uh, you'll want to do a longer duration trade and um, tune in for my next video, and I'll show you how to do that. But thanks for tuning in today. Um, have a nice day.